right, we're getting ready to do an installation of a new 13 by 13 inch chimney cap. These things are really pretty simple. I got my uh, little razor knife. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this package open. No big to do. Open it up. And this particular model is pretty self-contained. Your only component pieces are, besides the cap, you got four mounting screws. How about that? Can you see these? All right, I'm going to close these back up again because I want to show you a couple things. Uh, the chimney cap. First and foremost, this is the lid of the chimney cap. This piece that goes all the way across. This is the lid. This is what keeps all the rain out. And guess what? That rain is number one with the bullet. You do not want that coming down inside your uh, flue because it causes damage. If you have a traditional masonry ch chimney, it causes damage to the fire brick inside your house and the uh, refractory cement. So this is very important. Now if I tilt it up here a little bit, you see this, this piece here that goes all the way around. This is very standard. This is called your base. The base there's a couple preset holes here in each corner. That's where these mounting screws go on. Generally, these bases will also, if you have, look inside here, have a little bit of screen flanged out, and this screen will sit on top of the clay flue tile. This chimney cap will sit on top of the clay flue tile. And then you'll typically have, from the top of the base to the bottom of the lid, 10 inches, not always 10, could be eight inches. I'm guessing this is right at about eight inches of Animal Guard, the screen here, Animal Guard Spark Arrestor. Extremely important. Now, if you notice here, this is seven eighths inch gaps. That's fine. It will never keep insects out, but it'll keep things like birds, uh, bigger critters out. Uh, you, there's not much you can do keeping your fireplace uh, fire worthy and fire safe to keep insects out. The screen is just too fine. You can't ever use that. Uh, California uses a 5 8 inch gap. This is a standard industry 3 quarter inch gap. So th this is fine. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get back and uh, get up onto the roof with it and go ahead and show you how the attachment is. So if you're already back on the roof you're sitting next to standing next to the fireplace and you have the chimney cap in hand generally these chimney caps and the flue tile is extending very easy look at that you go ahead and put that over the clay flue tile I don't know if you can see in there with that screen that flanches out sitting directly on the top lip of this flue tile and it's a little bit of play that's normal what you do now, this particular model has the four screws. What I'll generally do is hand tighten the first one in, and as you can see there, that's a 3 8 inch head. I like using that as opposed to the screwdriver portion. I'll tighten it in a little bit. All right, then we'll move over, set it down. Well, all my other ones, you have four of these. Let's see if we can get one out here. I want to show you. I don't need to go through all these, but you notice this is a very fine pointed end. And you're basically, you're not ever going into the clay flue tile because that stuff is tough. You just use, it's becoming a pressure. It pushes pressure and it makes a pressure grip because you have one in each corner. I will be back in one second to show you the end result. All right, I've attached the anchor screws. And if we look here, I'm push, I'm giving it some upward pressure. I'm probably applying, push, I'm pushing up with my, using some bicep strength. I'm probably giving it about 20 to 25 pounds of upward pressure. These things are typically rated for about I would say 45, 50 mile an hour wind gust. I mean, you get a hurricane, tornadoes, there are some severe winds, they will come off uh, uh, potentially. But uh, generally, 
it's probably less than one percent of the time that you it's got to be pretty severe before these come off so this is on now i have seen where customers and i'll show you here sometimes will bring up a a, a battery drill and they'll have a masonry bit and the, wherever the screw made an indent or they'll make a mark they'll drill slightly into the clay flue tile just a little divot there to get better bite for the end of the screw but once again this clay flue tile and i've cut my fair share of this with diamond uh diamond uh blades diamond blades it is a pain so that's for really the uh, someone that has the time and inclination to get up here and do that. And I have only seen that maybe two or three times in the last 20 years. So th this is generally the preferred and the easiest method to do the installation on these when you have a clay flue tile that extends above the masonry crown.